Well, the High Court in Pietermaritzburg will hear tomorrow if Judge Pete Kuhn will recuse himself from former President Jacob Zuma's corruption trial. Kuhn asked the state and the defense to make submissions on whether he should recuse himself. Now, the judge indicated he may have to recuse himself given some of the strong views he expressed when dismissing the former president's application for Billy Downer to be removed from the prosecution. Now, Zuma and co-accused French firm Thales face charges of fraud corruption and money laundering. Let's cross over to ENCA senior reporter Desen Tatia ahead of tomorrow's proceedings. Desen, of course, you know, a lot of anticipation ahead of tomorrow. As there always is when the former president's uh, case is expected to be in court, except tomorrow is going to be a little bit quieter, but let's not underestimate the importance of it. Nevertheless, as you mentioned, the business of the day will be around whether Judge Pete Kuhn will be recusing himself. That will be the announcement to look out for. And obviously at that point, whatever decision is made, that will determine where this trial goes and when it actually gets underway. Normally, we would ex be expecting to see supporters, we'd be expecting to see a lot of activity outside the Peter Marisburg High Court, but in this particular instance, there's no indication that the former president himself will be at court. He's, he, he's not obligated to. At the same time, there's also no indication that he will have his supporters outside, as we've seen in the past. But one thing that has come out clearly here is that Judge Pete Kuhn has emphasized the importance of this decision of whether he recuses himself or not. And he did this during the last sitting in October. In fact, he says that it was imperative that the way this trial is handled, the way this case is handled, is beyond reproach. Let's listen to a bite uh, taken from part of that sitting in October last year. It's deserving of a lot more attention. And it's an important trial. Um, well, all trials are important. But uh, this is an important trial, and um, the approach that is to be followed must be one that's beyond reproach. Also uh, important to, to, to look at where this case is now. It's become seemingly less about the corruption trial itself, but more about the special plea. And all of this started in May 2021. So it's been about 18 months of dealing with the back and forth around the special plea. It was at the time that the former president had pleaded not guilty, but he also then wanted the lead prosecutor in this case, advocate Billy Downer, to recuse himself. So in doing that, uh, unfortunately, that special plea was shot down by Judge Pete Kuhn that same year. But the former president then took it to the Supreme Court of Appeal. He didn't have success there. He also then took it to the Constitutional Court. And uh, even there, unfortunately, that was dismissed. It ultimately led to December last year when his application was dismissed. And effectively, that meant that the trial could go ahead. There should be nothing standing in the, in the way regarding that special plea. This is also something that Advocate Billy Downer had made reference to during that last sitting. And he said, in, in essence, that it could go one way or another. On the one hand, it could mean more delays if he had, if former President Jacob Zuma had success in the Constitutional Court. But if he didn't, it meant that the path was clear. Let's listen to what Billy Downer had to say. So, and my, my learned friends, in trying to develop that argument for condemnation, which of course we haven't seen, because they choose not to give us an application for condemnation, even after we warned them weeks ago that we were going to argue that your Lordship's order had now kicked in, that the trial is going to start on the 7th of November. But they don't. And they now seek, I would imagine, unless they bullheadedly proceed and try to, to, to convince the Constitutional Court that they don't need to apply for leave, leave to appeal, um, uh, it's going to be a difficult application. So, so that being so, the Court is in a similar position to Mjerni, where it's very attractive to say, oh, well, let's just wait. Um, what's, an, what's another month or two or three or four or five? Uh, because the Concord in due course will decide this issue. They might decide it quite soon because uh, the application is in uh, and the state has to, has to, has to uh, answer, I think, if, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, their application is in and we have to answer and they have to reply, of course. Um, 
Um, and, and it's possible that the Con Court could, on the papers, dismiss the application, in which case this court would be the, then be even more free to go on. Um, or it could ask for argument and heads of argument and a trial date, etc. And that, that traditionally and um, in all of our experience takes a while. I want to bring in the uh, spokesperson for the J.G. Zuma Foundation, Mr. Mswanele Manyi, now just to talk about what their expectations are for tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining me, Mr. Manyi. I think firstly, just to confirm, the former president uh, will not be in court tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah, I can confirm that. But firstly, let me just apologize for the night ticket level thing. I'm going to note it here. Uh, Judge Kuhn issued a statement to this effect. Uh, I think tomorrow's day is more administrative than anything. No one will be arguing anything tomorrow. It's going to be a one-way trip where uh, uh, Judge Kuhn is going to be saying something about his judgment, uh, whether he recuses himself or not, and what is the way forward. That's really an administrative thing. And President Zuma has been formally recused from attending. Mm. You know, the, your patron, uh, the former president, has consistently said that he wanted his day in court. And now, with the situation that we find ourselves in now, especially with that Concord ruling in December, I just want to clarify the position of Mr. Zuma on this. So if he were to effectively get what he wanted in the sense of all of these so-called obstacles were out of his way, is he completely content with continuing with this trial expeditiously? Yeah, you, you must remember that uh, all President Zuma wanted is to be prosecuted by a person whose hands are clean. Uh, and as we speak here and now, it's public knowledge that uh, Billy Downer, Advocate Billy Downer, is accused number one in a criminal case involving uh, the breach of uh, Section 41 of, uh, uh, of the NPX. So that is a matter that I'm sure that uh, tomorrow there will be some exchanges on as to wait from here. Because we're not sitting here with a clean state with, every, with all boxes being ticked. Not all boxes are ticked, because we are potentially having an accused person that would be pretending to be uh, a person that uh, can prosecute without fear of favor. How is that possible? So from where I sit as an unlawyer, I just don't see it uh, happening that way. I think uh, I lost you for a bit there, but I just want to pick up on something you said. So is that an indication of what the, the strategy of Mr. Zuma will be going forward in that? Will his legal team be relying heavily on that private prosecution that is at play um, uh, before they proceed with the trial? Sorry, man. You know, the, the line is better. There's a big storm as well. So I'm struggling to keep the edge. But there is no particular strategy to do this or that. We are simply applying the law to the T. All President Zuma is asking for is that does the prosecutor, and this is the case with the plea, but with the plea uh, case that uh, was made in the, first, in, the, in the first instance. Now, if we've lost that all the way up to the constitutional court, but now for the uh, uh, developing issue, a new matter of uh, advocate Billy Downer being an accused person in a criminal matter. Now, whether uh, some semblance of turning a blind eye to that will happen or suddenly to prevail, where the NTA, once and for all, supplies, you see, for instance, if NTA was to supply a, uh, an advocate or a prosecutor whose hands are not muddy, it would be a much easier thing to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. But in this case, we have an NPA that continues to feel somebody that is facing criminal charges. So if anyone is not wanting this trial to happen, is the NPA, it's all in the NPA's hands. The NPA can call the bluff of everyone and just simply say, of the hundreds of, of prosecutors, if you have a problem with this one, here's another one. You know, and this one now is not facing some uh, imagined anything. Uh, is facing something that has, he has appeared in court for, 
uh, there's a, a whole case, there's a case number and everything. So I was sitting here with a, an accused, with, with a, a prosecutor who is an accused in a criminal uh, case. So why is that not obvious that uh, the situation is not conducive uh, for a clean prosecution? Why is that complicated? Well, Mr. Mani, I hope we can continue our conversation soon with a clearer line. Thank you so much for your time. That's, that's um, Swanele Mani with the J.G. Zuma Foundation. We'll take a short ad break, but when we come back, we'll speak to Mpumalelo Zikalale. He's a legal analyst, and we'll unpack a few more details around this case.